I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky, preventive cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. For the next few moments, we'll be talking about an article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings, how low to go with lipid-lowering therapies in a cost-effective and prudent manner that we've written with our colleagues, Dr. Cardoso, Blumenthal, and Martin, along with Dr. Francisco Lopez Jimenez and myself. There are five key points to make. First, there are two key concepts that drive the relationship between lipid-lowering therapy and risk reduction in an individual patient. The absolute milligrams per deciliter reduction is largely dependent on the baseline LDL levels. High-intensity statins like rosuvastatin 40 milligrams or atorvastatin 80 can lower LDL by approximately 50 percent. Doubling the dose further will add another 4 to 7 percent reduction. Azetamibe added in reduces LDL another 20 to 25 percent, and PCSK9 inhibitors reduce it another 60 percent. Second, the absolute risk reduction, or ARR, is the net benefit achieved by an individual patient with lipid-lowering therapy. This is highly dependent on baseline cardiovascular risk. For example, consider two patients, A and B. A has a 10-year risk of 20 percent, and B has a 10-year risk of 4 percent. Both have similar reduction of LDL of 40 milligrams per deciliter, and both have about a 25% relative risk reduction. However, patient A has a 5% absolute risk reduction, and B has a 1% risk reduction. Tell them it may take one to two years to achieve because it's a habit we all get into. B, advise all patients that they take maximally tolerated statin therapy if they meet guideline indications. This includes patients with known ASCBD, patients with elevated LDL in the range of possibly having familial hypercholesterolemia, and in primary prevention when the risk is over 20%. And C, reserve the new lipid-lowering therapies such as PCSK9 inhibitors for the highest risk patients with persistently elevated LDL cholesterol. The fourth key point is safety. To answer the question of how low to go with LDL, there are two key concepts to be addressed. Number one is that safety of the intensive lipid-lowering therapies, and number two is the cost-effectiveness. Regarding the, the uh, safety issues of the lipid-lowering therapies, statins notably can cause myalgia, new-onset diabetes, and possibly a slight increase in hemorrhagic strokes. Myalgias can occur in 20 to 25 percent of patients in many large retrospective Studies, rhabdomyolysis is rare with 2 to 5 percent or, or per 100,000 patient years. New onset diabetes can occur in 10 percent, but it's primarily patients that are at risk of diabetes with metabolic syndrome, overweight, elevated blood sugar at baseline. In the Jupiter study, there was a 4 to 5 cardiovascular events prevented for every one incident case of diabetes. The cholesterol uh, uh, trialists the CTT looked at hemorrhagic stroke, found a mild increase of 1.2 hazard ratio. Other large meta-analyses have not found that, however. Azetamibe and the PCSK9 inhibitors appear safe. In the PCSK9 studies, LDL was lowered to around the 30 milligram per deciliter range in many patients, and while no evidence of adverse effects was seen, it was only two years of follow-up, and we need longer studies. Cholesterol that's carried by LDL is used to help synthesize hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, aldosterone, and cortisol, and chronically low levels of LDL below 30, which is the lowest level found in any mammalian species on this planet, may cause secondary problems. So we need to be careful when we get below 30. And the fifth key point is cost effectiveness. This is very dependent on drug costs. All statins are quite inexpensive except for the branded patavastatin, which is about $320 per month or almost $4,000 per year, compared to $4 to $10 per month or $48 to $120 per year for generic statins. Azetamibe is now generic and is quite inexpensive along the line of the generic statins. And the PCSK9 inhibitors originally were around $14,000 per year, now have been lowered to less than $6,000 per year. However, studies have shown that prices will need to be below the $5,500 per year range to achieve a quality adjusted life year or quality threshold of $100,000 per quality. When giving PCSK9 inhibitors, these doses and generic statins uh, should be monitored very closely. Thank you for listening. Second, cardiovascular risk predictor tools are very helpful. 
pooled cohort equation in the U.S. and the SCORE system in Europe are very helpful to predict a patient's risk. The SCORE comes from Europe and it has a database of almost 200,000 patients and the, uh, in the pool cohort is from the Framingham basic data, some other studies added in. Risk prediction tools should be used regularly for every patient. The MESA risk calculator includes minority groups and factors in coronary artery calcification by CT scanning. Also, when you're uncertain with risk, a CT scan for coronary calcium can be very helpful. If the score is zero in a non-high-risk patient, which means under 20% risk, doesn't have familial hypercholesterolemia, doesn't have advanced risk factors, then it can be helpful to predict their risk. Always incorporate coronary calcium if there's further questions. Third, to be cost conscious and reduce optimally our patient's risk, we need to focus on three areas. A, that lifestyle, in order to reduce patient's cardiovascular risk in a cost conscious manner, Healthcare professionals should be an advocate for aggressive implementation of a healthy lifestyle. This is one of the most effective but hardest things for patients to do. Diet has recently been shown to be the number one risk factor now for cardiovascular disease and death in the United States, and it's essential we help our patients with this. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.